Alleluia. Let us all stand as we take a moment to welcome each other, turning to the people around us. Okay. And if we can, at this moment, now that we've acknowledged each other, can we squish a little bit? so that people who are coming in can find some space to sit and worship with us. At the count of three, can we squish to the center? One, two, and three. Squish, squish, squish. Okay. And let's now bow our heads and gather in reflective silence in a prayerful silence, but with joyful hearts as we lift each other up in prayer, as we continue to pray for the whole world, for the peace that we long for, for the end of violence of all kinds, especially against human life and the unborn. We pray for the poor, especially the victims of calamities and families that struggle, that they may find kind hearts, generous hearts to help them. And as we celebrate Easter Sunday, we take a moment to rejoice in the Lord for His gift. And so that we will be respectful in our celebration, please make sure that you have silenced your cell phones and turned off your alarms as we offer to our Lord our worship to our entrance song we sing from our hearts.
Today of all days, we remember this sign because it's a sign now of our redemption, the sign of love, the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We pause, realizing and accepting constantly our dependence on the mercy and compassion of God shown to us more fully in the sacrifice of His Son and in His resurrection. And so to Him we pray. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlock for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life 
to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So to those who are standing, there are some places I think you can squeeze in on this side if you want to be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
the first day of the week, Mary Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head was not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, of all days, is the day that we give rejoice, praise, glory to our God, our loving Father, because today, is the foundation of our belief. He is risen, right? So I'd like you to take a moment and with a smile, greet the people around you, not just beside you. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Smile. And after 40 days or more, finally, we're able to sing and we were able to say and use a word that we have not used for so many days in our Lenten journey. And that's a word that begins with the letter A and ends with the letter A. And at the count of three, let's all say it together. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Oh, you could do better than that. One, two, three. Hallelujah. There you go. Hallelujah. <laughs> because He is risen. We are reminded of three things that are important to us during this time. First, that we are loved, so we can say, Alleluia. I remember my mother, who became a charismatic, and in her own terms to us, she said, you know, my son, or anak, which is son or child, he said, I am now a charismatician. So, <laughs> so is that the same way as mathematician? But in every time, we, she was almost insufferable because every time things happen, she would say, Alleluia. And sometimes I say, why do you always say Alleluia? When I know that God loves me. So I say, Alleluia. Praise God. Because I know I am loved. People may reject me. I may have frustrations and disappointments. My father left her. And yet she, you are able to say, Alleluia. Because she knows that she is loved. And on a Lenten journey, we are reminded of all this. From the beginning of time, from creation, and even before the beginning of time, from the book of Genesis up to the book of Revelation, God only says one thing, and He reveals only one thing. I love you. And that is made perfect and manifested humanly to our own terms, something that we can understand in His Son, our Lord Jesus. So, St. Paul reminded us in his first letter to the Colossians, think of what is above because the love that is given us is a love that is perfect. It's a love that does not judge. It's a love that is merciful and compassionate. It's a love that is generous and providential. So, we must remember we are loved. If there's one thing that we can do in the morning when you wake up, make the sign of the cross before you even touch your cell phone and see if you have many likes. <laughs> make the sign of the cross. It doesn't take one second. Make the sign, if you wanna make it fast, okay. <laughs> and just say, God, you love me. And say, thank you. 
And that will put a smile on your face. Some people ask me, what's the secret of your smile? Because I know God loves me. No matter what. I may be unlovable even to myself. But God cannot stop loving me. If we wake up each day with that thought, then we are challenged to do one thing. We are loved, so we must love. It's not should I love, it's not can I love, it's I, not I hope I love, must. Because Jesus, on the Last Supper, on Holy Thursday, commanded us, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Which brings us to the second truth that we celebrate. And what is the second truth that we celebrate? We are saved because of that love. On Good Friday, he stretched out his arms and to tell us, I accept, give me everything. Give me all the pain. Give me the most horrible thing. And even death, to which we are all fearful and anxious and afraid. And he said, I will embrace it for you because I love you. That is why as Catholics, we have the symbol of the crucifix because we're not afraid to proclaim and to declare, this is what my Savior did for me. This is how I was saved. He embraced the worst of humanity. And that's why St. Peter reminded those who were listening to him in the Acts of the Apostles, he suffered, he was hanging on the tree. And we should never be afraid of suffering. We should never even be afraid of our own pain. We should never be afraid of even our own weakness and our mistakes and our failures because we are saved. When we come to Jesus, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation, we hear the words of absolution. So the challenge to us is, as we are saved, so we must save. And that is why the way we save, the way we're able to save others, is to pray for them. Parents sometimes are anxious. I brought up my kids, Catholic, they'll no longer go to church or they go to some other church where they have a more enjoyment because they have people dancing. They have people coming down from the ceiling, right? You see the advertisement on TV about Easter Sunday celebration. They don't want to come to church because it's boring. But the thing is, we tell them, I can still save, I can still pray. I approach them with love. When you come to church, tell them, don't tell them that, oh, you'll go to hell because you're not going to me. Tell them, I love you. I will pray for you. Do you want me to pray for anything? And then I say, nah. I just say, okay, I'll pray for your no. <laughs> so we must say, that's why during the Mass, we have a point in time where we lift up names to God. And that doesn't stop you from saying the names in your heart. God hears us. God listens. So we must remember that as we are saved, we must save. So the first truth is we are loved, so we must love. The second is we are saved, so we must save. And the third thing is that we are raised. This is what the Alleluia is all about. Because our Lord Jesus reminds us that our life does not end in death. And as I often said it in funeral and celebration of, ma of life masses, I always say life is changed, not ended. This is the symbol of the Easter candle. There are many more meanings into the symbol that we find in here. But the light reminds us that when the light of our lives here on earth is put out, we share in that eternal and great light. We are raised, so we must raise each other up in spirit. We must find ways to lift each other up. Maybe through our acts of loving kindness, maybe through our acts of patience. I know you already practice patience coming into church today, and you will practice more when you come out of the church of the parking lot. That's the first challenge. I remember Mark Angel telling me, I remember what you told us on one Easter homily, Father. You remember to always say, Alleluia. So you're, drive, you're pulling out, and there's a mature person who's also pulling out, and they're very slow. 
Say, Alleluia. <laughs> then you put a smile on your face, right? And maybe this is something that we could share all throughout this day and in the coming days to be an Easter people, to believe that we are loved, we are saved, and we are raised. And every morning, we remind us of that. But the reality is, as I said, life is never perfect. Like the, the, the disciples who went to see the stone rolled away, the first disciple hesitated coming in, but Peter barged into it. Mary Magdalene did not understand what was happening, but then later on, they opened themselves to the Spirit, and they understood, and they received. And this is what we must do. We must always say, at the very beginning of the day, make the sign of the cross, I am loved. And at the end of the day, I rest in your love. So that whatever happens, it is in the hands of God. And then, we truly are an Easter people. Then we truly share in that light. Then we truly share in Jesus, who in the Eucharist, as a living memorial that he left for us, as a sign of what he has given on the cross, we, we are strengthened. We know that he is with us, and when we receive him in Holy Communion and in faith and in even spiritual communion, he is not only with us, but he is within us, in us. So later, when we come to communion, this is what we say, Lord, Alleluia. I am loved, I am saved, I am raised. And may these words be words our Lord Jesus speak to us in spite and despite of what we have experienced, whether it's an experience that is joyful, sorrowful, whether it's a desolation or a consolation, whether it's peace or conflict, whether it is difficulties, or victories in life, whether it is joy or sorrow, Mother Teresa told us one thing, just smile. Just remember, if we sing Gloria at Mass with a smile, how different would it be, right? If we say Alleluia today, say it with a smile, because the risen Christ is within you, who tells you and gives you these loving and comforting and uplifting words that we make us say, Alleluia. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not stay afraid. I'm beyond all anguish or death. I am risen to life anew. When you feel that you've been empty and can give no more, know that I am your breath and I feel your soul. I am with you till the end of your days. I am with you. Have faith that I hold you even when you let go and I love I am here, I am ever with you. I am with you till the end of my days. I am with you, have faith that I hold you even when you let go and I love you, you must know I am here. I am ever with you. Hallelujah. And now we will have the opportunity as we all rise to renew our baptismal promises. Our response will be, I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. We need a more convincing answer, okay? 
Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. And now we profess our faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
By raising Jesus, God changed sin and death to grace and life. Confidently, we raise our prayers to the Holy One. That the whole church in this Easter season feel the enthusiasm of the first Christians spreading the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christian women and men witness the resurrected Christ in all they say and do. Those who dedicate their lives to the welfare of others, that they persevere in spite of discouragement or weariness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have received the Easter sacraments continue to grow in understanding of the Paschal mysteries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have had their innocence stolen, that they may overcome the darkness and find the light of your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather to celebrate the Lord's rising from the dead and who share in his body and blood recognize him in one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts for our families and our loved ones. And remembering Thanksgiving, Bishop Thomas Gwen, Vera Soria family, Rosan Lim, April de la Cruz, and Nancy Coulter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need of strength, healing, and comfort, Tony Casar and Father Garcia, Andrew Moray, Charlene Shinmoto, Drew Kersetrick, Maria Diaz, Louis Palacio, Vanessa Rodriguez, Jim Belna, Cheryl Martinez, Angel Sorosa, Lorenz, Lorenzo Moran, Susan, Susanna Cam, and Teresa Sita Mogul, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And for our dearly departed, Rudy Palacio, Sergio Valencia, Francisco Gutierrez, Salvador Vaca, Carmelo Caspeyan, Martha Gagnon, Mil Tennant, Francis Miller, Belente Año, Gerardo Malixi, Nina Haley, Carolina Gamboa, Flo Flor Gallego, Baby Cielo Yael, John Galexka, Dave Holy, Tyrone Priscillo, Flor Delisa Inclino, Araceli Lopez, Lydia and Roger Inson Jr., Ro Rolando Regala, Frank Lane, Jose Melad, Jack Kate, Imelda Franco, Ellie Flores, and Salvador Lopez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of glory and power, we thank you for the resurrection of your Son. Hear the concerns we offer you to the same Christ our Lord, as together we pray. God, my Creator, you made me all that I am and gave me all that I have. Help me show my gratitude by using these gifts to serve others in your name. Jesus, my Redeemer, you taught me the way to eternal life by your example of loving service to others. Grant me the courage to respond to your call to discipleship by following in your footsteps. Holy Spirit of God, be with me as I choose each day to put you first in my life. Let me be a model of Christian stewardship so others will come to know you through my actions. I pray, dear Lord, that you open the minds and hearts of all the men women, and young people of our parish, that we may joyfully accept your challenge to be good stewards. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Reverently. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially those gathered today and their intentions, whose faith and devotion are known to you alone. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and, your, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray and graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his soul in venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, and in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all who sleep in Christ in a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all good, these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For us Catholics, the rite of Holy Communion is sacred because we truly believe that it is indeed our Lord Jesus that we receive. If you're Catholic and you're prepared to receive Holy Communion, you can make an altar of a throne of your hand or to receive it on your lips. And to our, if you're Catholic and you're not prepared, and to our Christian brothers and sisters, we invite you to join us in this sacred rite. However, we ask that you put your hands across your heart to receive a blessing.
that is free. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. It will begin with a presentation of Father Robert Spritzer in the parish hall at 2 p.m., followed by the 3.30 Divine Mercy Chaplet here in the church. Next Sunday also, our Boy Scouts will be asking for uh, your help to raise funds by the purchase of $10 discount cards. And on this month, April, our Mass with the anointing of the sick will be at the 8 a.m. Mass on April 22nd. And later, when we, after our recessional, the kids could fall in line, so that they can receive Easter eggs from us, or the young ones, or also the young ones, O-N-C-E. Okay. And every second weekend of the month, we remember those who are experiencing a debilitating sickness, and for those who have the, departed, the departure of a loved one, so we all pray for them. Almighty and eternal God, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward your servants who are ill. Grant them strength and comfort amid the challenges they experience. Restore them to health of body, mind, and spirit. Merciful God, your son wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Walk with those who are grieving a departure of a loved one. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And to our loving mother we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you to today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion has drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God descend upon you and your loved ones, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.